Hey guys, I'm back. Check this thing out. Shiny. Ooh, I like shiny objects. I'm very attracted to shiny objects. Okay, anyway. Oh, you gonna sit with me, Peter? Oh, you're gonna walk away. Show me your butthole and walk away. Story of my life. Well, guys, I'm back. You may have seen, you may see this one first. I don't know. I just did another monthly knife club unboxing. It was outside, it looked beautiful out, and then the sun went away. So, I'm back inside. So before we begin, remember, hit subscribe, turn on all your notifications, like the video, or dislike the video. Either way, leave a comment, interact. That way, Facebook, uh, Facebook sorry, YouTube is doing its, its mass extinction event. It's automatically unsubscribing people from all sorts of channels again to try to get rid of bots and fakes and all that stuff. And I, I have I have had so many people tell me lately that, you know, oh, I haven't been getting notifications. All of a sudden I stopped getting notifications or I'm unsubscribed or all this. That's how you prevent it from happening. Interacting with channels regularly, making sure you're subscribed and you have your notifications. So do all that stuff that all the real life, like professional type YouTubers always tell you to do in videos. I'm gonna have to start telling you to do that in videos. So we got Monthly Knife Club. Now this has to be the Onyx because I've opened up everything else already in a big box, so. Yep. Their targeting system is off, Captain. Luke, you've switched off your targeting system. What's wrong? Nothing, I'm okay. All right, then open this damn box. Sometimes you use the force to open the box. Okay. Sorry, I'll grow up. No, I won't. <laughs> you guys know I won't. So we have a SOG. A big. So, okay, so it's a, it's a SOG box. So we know the knife's about that big because it's a SOG box, because that's what they do. So it is the Onyx Collector's Plan, which is, I said in a previous video, you've got the standard name brand, and then you've got the tier two name brand, and then you've got the Onyx. I don't remember seeing that I do. I don't know if I, I don't know. Anyway, so we've got the Altair FX. Anybody know Altair? What movie Planet Altair is in? One of the best science fiction movies ever made. Uh, the Altair FX fixed blade knife. It's a green handle, green handle. All right, so it might be this big because it's, you know, fixed blade, but still, they, anyway. So here are all the specs on the knife, on the card. This is what the subscription costs you. And if you go on the internet and do some searching right now, you'll find it for between this and between this. You may find it a little lower if somebody A, violates map pricing, which is not a good idea. I should do a video all about map pricing one day and what it means. Or it could be you know, on, on sale somewhere. And if it is, great, grab it for that price. But this is the standard price you're gonna find it for online. Um, so, cryo CPM 154, I should also talk about what cryo treating is versus regular heat treating, but you don't want to hear about that right now. You want to hear about lightweight and configurable design. And we want to talk about this knife. We want to see this knife. So there is a link to Monthly Knife Club in the video description. Well, I'm getting this open. And I always remind you guys, it's not, it's not an affiliate link or anything. I just where I figure money is well spent. I like to, I like this company. And I've spent quite a bit of money on them myself. I think they have great subscription options. And when people ask me, what would I recommend? This is always one of the things that comes up. So uh, anyway, you can check it out and see. So this is the Altair Fixed Blade, Altair FX. I wonder if they have Altair Non-FX. Like I said, SOG and their packaging. We don't need the rest of this. Don't need it. But anyway. So what is on this? There's a there's a thing on this. I don't know. I don't know, but I'll clean it off. I have this in acetone just handily available as I was just working on the shiny little airplane. I don't know what kind of what kind of goo coating was on this thing. 
um, if it was just to keep it nice in the package or did I just remove some level of protection I but you know what that shouldn't be uh, if that's your protection for your blade and it just comes off with a quick rub with alcohol it's probably not very well protected anyway Now there are ugly streaks on the blade, but oh well, let's get on to it. So is this plastic? This is plastic. This is um, plastic scales. Okay, so for for a $149 knife to $197, I'm guaranteeing the $197.95 is the MSRP price from SOG, you know, if you get on like their website. For $149, we should be getting G10 or Micarta or something that's not plastic. Just something that's not plastic. This is killing me. Hmm, better. But we should be getting something that's not just plastic. And I'm not sure, this looks like it is, yeah, see, you can pry, see? See that little, you see that there? You can pry this up. And I feel like we have to now. I feel like we have to do that. But you know what, I'm gonna wait. If you wanna see me do that towards the end of the video, you can, I know not everybody's interested in that. So we've got this little plastic sheath here. So I see what they're talking about where it's configurable. And so this is, this is one mounting option. You can put a smaller strap through it here. You can kind of configure this little guy, you know, and, and how you're gonna, so you see you've got like, it's, I guess I gotta, I don't have a, does it come with a wrench? You'd think that of, of all the things, again, $149, it would come with the wrench to undo these these little screws for all this. So once again, I'll, I'll get to this, I'll, I'll do this, but not everybody cares about that right now. So. Very good retention on your sheath though. And it lets go pretty easily enough. We'll talk about this, we'll take these scales off, because it actually does show you how to take the scales off here as well, which is nice. I thought I was a genius and I figured it out, but no, I'm just the average common dude attracted to shining stuff that I always was. Pretty decent jimping where your thumb would rest right here. I can't quite call it a thumb ramp, but then interestingly, we've got some more aggressive jimping down by the tip. Now, is this for, you know, some fine control over the tip for doing work with it. You know, I'm not exactly sure what it's for. Um, it doesn't really lend itself any better for a reverse grip. Um, is it there just to look good? Whatever this coating is, it picks up fingerprints and finger oils and everything else. No, oh, I don't like, I don't like it. I don't like it. Now I know I'm whining about that, but I, presentation matters. Ugh, it's a thing to me and not everybody else. I also have considerable amount of stuff on my hands from all the stuff I've been working with, but I don't know. I like my blade to look nice and clean. It's a brand new knife. It doesn't need to look like that, but that's just me. But what I'm concerned with really is, is so if you were to use this knife for, for anything and you got any kind of material on it, you know, what does this say for the coating that's on it? Let's say you are taking it out into the woods and it gets wet. You're cutting plants and there's different liquids in plants. Maybe you're hunting and you get blood on Like this coating does not seem to repel anything. It wants to attract and let anything known to man absorb into it is what I'm saying. That's kind of the point. So I don't just bitch and complain like, oh, my blade is not pretty anymore. My point is if it does simple touching puts marks on it like this and and you know so now sorry guys sometimes it's hard to maintain a coherent train of thought um if if this just from touching it lets this get lets this you know kind of cake onto the blade what else does in the course of what you're going to use the knife for and how does that affect the coating and how does that further affect the blade is my point is what is is all it's it's not about looking pretty um i like things to look pretty I'm sure you guys like things that are pretty. Nobody wants to marry somebody that's ugly sitting on the bench all by themselves. Um, but this just leads to questions about other stuff. 
And the easiest way to, to, to get to that is like, ew, look at the ugly marks on the blade. Now you understand my thought process. <sighs> There's a reason the VA has me on all the meds they do. Okay, back to the knife. Um, so it is a very nice, efficient blade shape. I can't argue with that. Nice drop point, still don't understand the point of this jimping here. Maybe it has something I'm just not seeing. But like I said, if you if you were going to, see, the thing is though, when you're gonna choke up on a knife like that a little bit, they usually have a choil for you, or um, there's not really a ricasso area or anything. I mean, it just, but if you were, that would really hold your finger nice and secure and let you do some kind of fine cutting with the tip. I don't know. The knife itself is comfortable. It's a little skinny. You know, but this is kind of, I would say this is sort of a minimalist knife too. And they tend to be, and that helps them stay lighter. Um, you have your very small configurable sheath. Again, I think that this is intended to be a, um, a small, light EDC type fixed blade. So the bulkier it is, the more it's going to add weight. If it's for EDC, um, you know, they they want it to be small and not take up a lot of space. I get that. From a comfort standpoint, the way I look at it is EDC could entail a lot of time with your hands spent on that knife. So I, I don't know. I like kind of a, a little bit bigger scale, maybe with more of a little bit of palm swell in there so that you can really, I mean, I think that makes it a little more comfortable from my point of view. Not everybody agrees. It's a beautiful thing about the knife community. Everybody can have kind of the knife that they want. But um, the design though, I think the design of the blade, the design of the handle works. It's comfortable, it's simple, but it's a nice clean cutting edge. Bevels look very even. Um, so production standards are pretty good. Every fixed blade I get now, I look for a 90 degree spine so that if you did need to use it to strike or anything like that, you could. This does not have that, and I don't think you could. Well, yeah, actually a little bit here near the tip. This settles into a nice 90 degree edge over here. You probably could use this area here. Uh, this would be great for actually scraping a, um, a magnesium block maybe even scraping some fat wood to get some shavings actually right there now that i think about it and then you could definitely scrape that against your ferro rod so let's get the funny money and that feels pretty good i felt smoother honestly but from more expensive actually from some cheaper knives too i don't know it's 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 a good it feels a good smooth flow through the paper i don't know what i'm trying to say today you probably shouldn't even be watching this video. Stop wasting your lives on my stuff. Um, let's see. Let's do a slice. Yeah, very nice. No effort whatsoever. Pull through. No effort whatsoever. I should stop using this cord. This cord is garbage. Um, can we pew? Pew! 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 You hear that nice little snap of the cord, though? That's pretty good. I like that. Weight and balance feels pretty good for a knife of this size. I don't know, I'm trying to figure out what I would use it for specifically. Um, I'm more of a, in a, a knife this size, I'm more of a folding knife kind of guy. That's just me. For, you know, if I'm gonna use a fixed blade, I'm gonna use all the benefits of a fixed blade and use something a little bit bigger, I think. But that's just me and my, those are my druthers. Where do I know that word from? I don't know, but um, that's just Air Force, Air Force performance writing. That's what I know that. Those of you who like to fix blade EDC, I think this would work. But I want to explore some of the more finer elements of the sheath and these scales. Small enough to fit in there? This is. Now we should, according to this, just be able to uh, use screwdriver to carefully lever off both handles. Well, that's what it says. This is just the first thing I had near me, so this is what I'm using. And if this doesn't work, then I feel cheated, like you need some kind of special tool. So here's, as it comes off,
let's switch tools now. See, I don't, I don't know how this is popped on. I don't want to hurt it, so I'm going really gentle. There we go. And here's what we have underneath. And yeah, it did kind of mar up that scale a little bit. So can you buy different scales? Could we make scales for it? Yeah, probably. Probably, but we'd have to just drill holes and screw them in. These are actually pretty sturdy plastic scales, but still plastic. That's my point. So here is the knife, scaleless, naked. Yeah, these might add a half an ounce to it. So neck knife fans, and we have just we just saw a neck knife, not too smaller than this, I think. You could you could dangle this if you so choose, and it still maintains good retention in the sheath without those scales. Now that I know it does this, first thing I'm thinking about is taking it to the shop, sandblasting off whatever this coating is, and um, redoing the whole damn thing in Cerakote. Because I can't stand this coating. 154CM, by the way, good steel. Very good steel. For an EDC blade especially, great steel. Um, CPM 154, no complaints about that whatsoever. They say 154 CM on here, as opposed to this says CPM 154. It's essentially the same thing. Um, CPM 154 is made by Crucible. It's a little bit different than than, than 154 CM um, because one's a powdered steel. I, actually, you know what? I might be talking out of my ass. They might be exactly the same thing. I believe there's a little difference. If I'm talking out of my ass, I'm gonna put I'm talking out of my ass in the thing. I kind of I kind of right now remember there's a little difference between 154 CM and CPM 154. We'll we'll see. But either way, the 154 is is a good it's a very good EDC steel, holds an edge very well, fairly easy to maintain, um, you know. So good properties, um, and of course, obviously, it's one big chunk of 154 CM slash CPM 154, so that's good. For looking at the sheath, are these going to be, what kinds of screws are these? So I think we have two different screws at play here. So that's either a T8 or a T9. T8, good. Good, good, good. Now I feel like I uh, am smart because I identified that right away. So here is the main assembly, and you know what? I'm just going to keep these on because there's no real reason to take this off. We'll risk losing these things. Um, are these also T8? Oh, I was worried that this wouldn't make sense, but it does. Thank God they use the same size screw. You know how many times some company wouldn't use the exact same size screw and make us have two different bits? I mean, you guys know it happens. So this is what they were getting at over there. So you can have this, and then you can adjust this to different, see the little star pattern? And then you can put the screws in different places and use this, or you could just take it off. And like I said, minimalist, that I'm willing to bet would fit in a, uh, a Molly compatible type webbing pretty perfectly and strap it on places. Or again, you know, you could you could neck this, I think. For people that want to do that, I would not want to do that. But for people that did, you have that option. So, I like when they give you options. And I understand there's only one hole here and typically a neck knife has two, you know, to, to balance it and hold it, but options is what you got. Um, so, Overall, I think it's a it's a nicely done edge. From from here to here, I really like it, uh, except for this stupid coating that I don't like. But knife wise, it you know the business end of the knife works. It does well. It cuts well. It performs. Good steel. Um, 
comfortable handle profile even if I even if I would want to widen up a lot but you know what with this handle system it gives me the option to I don't know if they sell like I said if they sell other scales I mean I this is my first time seeing the knife but you know what if I want to bitch and cry about the scales I have the option to make ones out of wood g10 or you know or any other material that I think are more comfortable so there you go um, that's on me if I want to do that different options with the sheath which i think is pretty cool so you know this knife can serve different purposes for different people which i really like the multi-use potential of it sog i think i think sogs are overpriced as a whole i think most sog knives are a little bit more expensive than they need to be um, i think you could get the exact same thing um, from another company same material same quality and they would probably charge you less. and I'm not naming any specific company I'm not I'm just saying SOGS I believe in general are a little overpriced but in terms of what this one offers you I kind of like all the options I still think this should not be plastic um, I, you know G10 or micarta versus the plastic in terms of weight and stuff I don't really think it saves you that much G10 versus, you know, or the G10, micarta, whatever, versus the plastic, I really don't think the weight savings are all that much. I don't think it would benefit that much to make them out of plastic. I think it saves them a lot of money and production time because these are ejection molded. But other than that, I don't, I don't think it, you, the consumer, I don't, I don't think it saves you all that much um, because the price, like I said, being a $150 knife, you should be paying for G10 or some better material, not injection molded plastic. But that's my that's my biggest complaint about the knife besides the coating that I don't like. So what do you guys think of this overall? So my usual questions. Number one, is this a knife that you would pay for on your own? Number two, if you were subscribed to the Onyx subscription, what would you think? Now, I love the Onyx subscription. It's not a knife I'm terribly excited about because I'm just not really a big fixed blade guy, and if I am, and if I am into fixed blades, I want something a little bit bigger and more field working, for lack of better words. You know what I mean? Um, but I still love the Onyx subscription. I've gotten some great knives from it, and like I said in another video, we're getting near summertime, which is another one of the times I love to do giveaways. So, is this a knife that you could see in your pocket or on your pack or on your belt, and would like to see it as a potential, you know, knife? For a summertime giveaway uh, it doesn't just have to be one thing for a summertime giveaway by the way we can have multiple ones so let me know what you think of it in terms of that like i always suggest people when they ask me you know what's a good knife subscription i always say monthly knife club has a lot i love the onyx uh the tier two is usually pretty good too but you know go check them out and see what they've got they have a lot of options and again please make sure you hit subscribe like comment interact make sure you have all your notifications on because when we do the big giveaways three, four times a year, you don't want to miss out on them. You don't want YouTube automatically unsubscribing you. So, please let me know what you think of this knife. If you have experience carrying this knife and there's something I've overlooked or something you think people should know, throw that in the comments too. Let me know if you like if there's something real world you want people to know about it. And remember that you guys are all absolutely awesome and I appreciate every single one of you and I'll be back again real soon.